Hi guys, this is Sadek from Dwarven.com and in this video, we'll show you how to flash the latest superior OS GSI ROM based on Android 14 on any Android phone. So please take a backup of all the data on your phone and then let's get started. First off, you'll have to get hold of Android SDK platform tools. So get it from my guide and extract them onto your PC. You could extract them anywhere you want. In my case, I've done the extraction in C drive and these are the files of platform tools. Once that is done, you will now have to enable USB debugging and OEM unlocking. USB debugging is required for ADB commands, whereas OEM unlocking is required to unlock the bootloader on your phone. So let's now carry out both this task. For that, go to the settings menu on your phone. From settings menu, you have to go to about phone and tap on MIUI version seven times. In case of Xiaomi and Poco phones, on the other hand, for all the other phones, you will have to tap on Android version seven times or rather the build number seven times. Once you have tapped on that, you will get a prompt that you are now a developer. So go back, again go back, then go to additional settings or system in other phones. And you should now see developer option. Go there and enable the toggle next to USB debugging. You will get a prompt on your phone. Check mark, I'm aware of all the risk. This only happens with the Xiaomi, Poco and Redmi phones and not the other phones. And once that is done, tap on OK. In some cases, you might get an RC key prompt as well. In that case, tap on OK as well. And with this, debugging is now enabled. Let's verify the same. So go to platform to footer address bar, type in CMD and hit enter. This will launch command prompt inside platform tools. Now type in ADB devices and make sure that you're getting a serial ID. If you're not getting any ID, then unplug and replug your phone from the PC. Disable and re-enable USB debugging. Tap on revoke USB debugging. Use the official cable that came with your phone and use the USB 2.0 port on your PC. So carry out these USB tweaks and make sure that you're getting an ID. Once you're getting this ID, let's now move ahead. So now you will have to unlock the bootloader on your phone. For that, you may refer to our guide and get this job done on most phones. You just have to use the forward flashing unlock command. But in case of Xiaomi, Poco and Redmi, you will have to use the me unlock tool and carry out this task. I have made a separate guide and a video on the same. You could refer to this guide and get the job done once you have unlocked the bootloader. You will now have to get hold of the latest superior OS GSI ROM from here. So regarding the ROM, there are quite a few variants. Let me show you as you could see from here. So which variant should you download? So I have made a separate guide as well. Let's check out that guide. In the meantime, please install the Triple Info app on your phone as well. You can install the app from Play Store. So install and launch the Triple Info app. And this is the app. First off, make sure it's showing as Triple supported. If that's well and good. Now, first off, let's check out the various variants of the ROM. So this is the ROM name, then the Android version. After that is the CPU architecture. It should be ARM64 in most cases. Instead, you, you could also verify from here, as you could see, it's the CPU architecture, ARM64. Once that is done, next up is the B. B is for if your phone is system as root, and in that case, it will be B. On the other hand, if it's not system as root, then it will be AB. In our case, it's system as root, so it should be B. And all the ROMs are B over here itself, so that's well and good. Then you have two variants, either the G variant or the V. The G is the one which comes with Google app packages, and the V is the one which is the vanilla build without any super apps, without any Google apps and packages. Then is the S. S stands for super user. So we have all the variants of the super user, and I have explained all these in my guide as well. You could refer to my guide and verify the same from here as well, the CPU architecture, the AB and the VG as well as NS, the non super user and the super user build and the VNDK light. So in my case, as you could see, the VNDK is not in light mode. So if that is the case, then you will have to download the ROM, which is non VNDK. So in my case, the second and the fourth one are the two ROMs, which are non VNDK. If your VNDK light is in isolation mode or VNDK, DK is in light mode, then in both these cases, you will have to download the ROM, which has a VNDK keyword. In our case, VNDK is not in light mode. So we have to use the ROM, which is non VNDK, which is the second or the fourth one. In the difference in the second and fourth is only with regards to the Google apps. The second one has the G apps, whereas the fourth one is the vanilla build without any G apps. So as of now, I'll be using the fourth ROM. So get hold of the ROM file corresponding to your need and the requirement of the phone and once you have got the ROM file, you have to extract it. For extracting, you may use a third party software such as 7-zip. So let me show you that as well. By default, the ROM will be in a .img.exit format. Right click on it and select show more option. Then 7-zip and extract to superior OS and it will give you the IMG file. 
So as you can see, this is the ROM IMG file. Once you have got the IMG file, transfer the file to the platform to folder on your PC. So let's transfer it here and it will take a few seconds. Once that is done, your next course of action is to get hold of the VBMeta file. You will have to download the same firmware which is currently installed onto your phone and then extract the VBMeta file from there. So you could verify the firmware version by going to the settings menu and from the settings menu go to about phone and check out the build number or the OS version. So in my case, as you could see, it's a 1050 UMRINXM. So make sure to get hold of the same firmware or the fastboot ROM, which is currently installed onto your phone. So this is my firmware, as you could see, OS 1050 UMRINXM. Moreover, make sure it belongs to the same country or region in which you are currently living. In my case, it's the India variant and I have the IN keyword. In Zomi, as you could see, the IN is the keyword for the India region. So get hold of the exact same firmware. And, and once you have got the firmware, you will have to extract it. In case of Zomi and Pixel phones, the firmware are in the zip format. You could simply extract it. In case of Zomi, it's in the .tgz format. You could extract it using 7-zip. Then you will get a tar file. Again, extract the tar file using 7-zip. And then you will get this folder. And from there, you go to the images folder and get hold of the VB meta file. On the other hand, in case of Pixel, it's just a zip file. You could extract it normally as well. Then in case of OnePlus and Oppo and Realme, the firmware is in the format known as payload.bin. So extract the bin file or for that, you will have to make use of a tool known as Fastboot Enhance. So copy the payload bin file and then place the bin file inside the Fastboot Enhance folder. Then launch the Fastboot Enhance tool. Go to payload dumper, click on browse and select the payload bin file. Then Select, go to the partition tab, choose the VB meta file and click on allow incremental and click on extract image. Then choose the location and click OK and it will extract the VB meta file onto your PC. Let me show you. This is the extracted file. Once that is done, you may then have to transfer the file to the platform to folder on your PC as well. So in my case, I'm using the Xiaomi ROM. So this is the VB meta file. So once you've done the extraction, place the file here. So as of now, both the GSI ROM file as well as the VBMeta file should be there inside the platform to folder on your PC. Once that is done, let's now move ahead and boot our phone to fastboot mode. So for that, type in ADB, reboot bootloader and hit enter. And your phone will now reboot into the fastboot mode. It will take only a few seconds. So let's just wait for that to happen. And then we'll move ahead with the next step. So as you could see, our phone is now in the fastboot mode. Now type in fastboot devices and make sure that you're getting a serial ID. If you're not getting any ID, then you'll have to install fastboot drivers. I made a separate guide and a video on the same. You could refer to my guide and the video and get this job done. Once you've installed the drivers, right click on the Windows icon and select device manager. Then expand the Android phone section and make sure that your phone is being shown as Android bootloader interface. So this as well as the serial ID next to fastboot signify that the PC is able to read the phone in fastboot mode. And we are now good to go ahead. So now you will have to disable the verification check. For that, we'll use this command as well as the VBMeta file to get this job done. So simply copy the entire command and paste it in the CMD window. It will disable the verification check and flash the VBMeta file. So guys, with this, the verification is disabled and we have flashed the file as well. Moving on, now you will have to boot your phone to fastboot D mode. So for that, type in fastboot, reboot fastboot. And your phone should then boot into the fastboot D mode in a matter of few seconds. So just a minute, let me paste the command here. And it should now boot into the fastboot D mode in around four to five seconds. And do note that the fastboot screen might vary. Fastboot D screen might vary depending on the phone that we are using. I'm using a Poco phone and this is the fastboot D screen in my case. So now let's move ahead and now you'll have to remove the product A partition so as to make space for the GSI ROM. So simply copy this command and it will remove the product A partition from your phone. And then we could easily flash the GSI ROM without any issues. So the product A partition has been removed from our phone. So let's move ahead and now flash the GSI ROM. For the ease of convenience, let's rename the file to something shorter. So let's just rename it to GSI. And the complete name becomes GSI.IMG. And now we'll have to flash this GSI ROM to the system partition on your phone. So type in fastboot flash system and the name of the file, which is gsi.img and hit enter. And the GSI ROM will now be flashed into the system partition. And as you could see, the ROM has been broken down into 13 sub partitions. Each of the partition will now be flashed. 
and it could take up to around six to eight minutes. So let's just wait for the flashing to complete. So guys, the flashing is now complete. Now you will have to do a format data. This will wipe off all the data from your phone. So type in fastboot space dash w and hit enter. And the wipe is now done. Once that is done, you will now have to reboot your phone to the OS. So just type in fastboot reboot and your phone should now reboot to the newly flashed GSI ROM. Let's first wait for the boot animation to appear. Once that happens, then we could verify that the flashing has been done successfully. So let's wait for around four to five seconds and the boot animation should show up in a matter of few seconds. And then we could proceed ahead with the next step. And it should now be visible. So let's, so as you could see, it's the boot animation of superior OS. This signifies the flashing has been done. Now the first boot up will take up some additional time frame. This is completely normal and nothing to worry about. From the subsequent time, that will not be the case. So let's just wait. And in fact, the boot up was quite fast this time around and we are directly into the OS. In case you have flashed the G apps build, then you will have to carry out the setup process as well. In my case, I have used a non G apps build, the vanilla build. And as you could see, there is no Google apps and packages. This is the browser that you could use in case instead of the Google Chrome. And in fact, you have a couple of important Google apps. One is the messaging apps. And the second one is the call apps. So a couple of apps are there. Apart from that, there are no Google apps. Bloodware is nothing as such. And this is the PHA trouble settings. If there are any issues, you may get hold of the and fix the issues from this section. Then for audio, the second alternate audio policy should fix most of the headphones issues. Apart from that, if you are facing any networking or 4G LTE issues, then go to the IMS feature and you may make use of this section and fix the issues. Then there are a few miscellaneous tweaks as well. It's for the advanced user only. So make sure you are doing, you are sure about what you are doing. These are all the hardware level tweaks and advanced level tweaks. Apart from that, you, you get a few features which are corresponding to your OEM. In my case, Xiaomi is the OEM. So enable double tap to wake. So let me check this feature out. So it's working and apart from that, there are a few audio effects that you could tweak and enable. They are quite impressive. You might not need Viper for Android or James and any such app. It could be done right from here itself. So these are the some PHH trouble settings. Apart from that, it's the superior lab wherein you will get all the tweaks and customization, which is the USP of this ROM. For instance, this is the status bar and you may get hold of all the status bar customizations. And let me show you set about items and the styles of the QS battery percentage and the 4G LTE icon, the clock style. Then we have the QS styles in this. You could choose the UI of the QS, either this or the Android 11. As you could see, it's the Android 11 build. Let me go back to the default one. Then you could choose the themes as well. There are quite a lot of themes for that. And this is the translucent rectangle. And as you can see, the change has been implemented. Then we have the brightness slider indicator and positioning and the height label or the show label, then the number of tiles that you want to see in each column and row. Apart from that, you have the button tweaks. Then there is the navigation bar. You could configure the navigation and use the three button, two buttons or the gesture navigation. Currently I'm using the gesture navigation. Then a, a simple few navigation tweaks are also included there. And these are the gesture tweaks. These are, are the same tweaks which you could find on across every pixel ROM and the pixel UI. Then apart from that, a few lock screen tweaks as well. Do note that these lock screen tweaks will add up some extra spice to your UI and UX. But on the flip side, you will have to let go of some battery drainage as well. Then the power menu is there. So we have the advanced reboot option as well. That's great to see. In this, we have the recovery bootloader and the system UI. So there is no fastboot D, but that's not required in most cases. It's well and good apart from that. We have a few themes as well. This is the font style. There are quite a lot of font style that you could choose from. For instance, let me choose this. And as you could see, the change has been implemented. The change will be visible across all the OS and UI UX of the ROM. Then these are the various fonts. This is the surfer font as you could see. So anyways, let me go back to the default font style. Apart from that, you have the icon packs, which will be visible in the status bar. 
then there are a few signal icon tweaks as well and you could choose all these ui tweaks then the data icon 4g and lte as well as the 5g then this is the 5g icon size which you could choose from and these are all the icon tweaks and this is the icon shape for instance let's choose the sc scroll and the same will be visible across the app drawer and the home screen let's come back to the default icon shape apart from that you have the navigation bar style if you're using three button navigation then you could choose from any of these three icons then there are a few notification tweaks as well then you have a themes which we have done and apart from that there are a few miscellaneous icons so you also get an unlimited photo storage that's quite good to see this will be unlimited storage in original quality and your phone will be spo spoofed to the google pixel xl the first google pixel phone and apart from that are the same ui and ux that you get on on android 14 you may change the lock screen clock style and the same will be visible on the lock screen as well let me show you if you have a notification then it will be at the top left when there's no notification it will be at the right at the middle of the phone apart from that there are you may change the theme and the color from here the if color. you talk about the home screen you have the option to enable themed icons as you could see from here it has been added then likewise you have the option to change the app grid size as well and choose up till 6 cross 10 that's quite a lot of apps to choose from i haven't seen these many in any other rom so guys as of now i could see that this is one of the most highly customizable gsi rom usually in case of gsi rom we don't have much tweaks to carry out but in case of superior os there are quite a lot of customization that you could choose from and apart from that you could see it's the latest android 14 build that i am running on my poco f5 so guys on that note i round up this video if you have any queries do let me know in the comment section and thanks a lot for watching